fuck them hoes, girl. Like, listen, y'all can come over here and troll me. You ain't got to troll me other places. Let me just let y'all know something right now, girl. The fuck? What the fuck wrong with y'all? You don't have, don't go nowhere else and troll me, bitch. You can troll me right here. You got something to say all of a sudden. Bitch, like, damn. The fuck? Is that weird or not? Excuse me. I'm sorry. I'm just going to get something off my chest before I start talking to Chase. But let me tell you something. You in the motherfucking comments, bitch, talking about you. And then you follow me. Bitch, don't. You in the comments talking about, oh, I don't know why you signed him. All he do. What the fuck? You, God damn. I got 70 months. Do you want to win? How, you, how much more you want to motherfucking win nasty, bitch? The fuck wrong with you? The fuck? I got 70 months. Do you, what more do you want? What the fuck? You don't want me to you don't want me to sell a book while I'm there? That's gonna hurt you? You hate me that much? God damn, I'm just I'm just bitch, I swear to God, you bitches like I don't own for on some real shit. Like what the fuck? Like, <laughs> yo, girl. Girl. Like what the per what's the per? You you don't want a bitch to like you like damn. Okay. What else you want? Oh, I don't even want you to sell a book while you hate me that much? The fuck I did? I must have fucked your baby daddy. Got to be. I must have bit that bitch over. Oh, I don't want you to be signed about eight o'clock. The fuck? <laughs> Damn. I set him, uh, set him a book or two is something I could do while I'm in jail. But you don't want that to happen? <laughs> That's weird as fuck. You just won't get it, huh? I got to get it. And then you a blank page, no nothing. You just really like, bitch. You was a motherfucking lie. I have a feeling who that is because only one person says some stupid ass shit like that. But at the end of the day, bitch, you can suck my, you can suck out of my asshole for real. The fuck wrong with you, Earl? Last thing, Vince, girl, you got me feeling myself, girl. This shit feel good, girl. Bitch, I already been sentenced. What else you want? Like, what you want some more? Oh, go get sins and don't sell a book. Would you just want everybody to hate me? Just say that. Just say that. I don't want. I don't want you. Like what? Yeah, hoes. Yeah, hoes. Weird. I don't want nobody writing you a letter. Or nothing. Like what the fuck? But guess what? Listen and listen. If I send a message right now, I'm gonna go to their page. Well, um, I'm drinking some Georgiana by uh, La Sink Vince, girl. I've been drinking since Tuesday, bitch. I've been drinking since Tuesday, bitch. Do you want me to have a gun away party either? Can I do that? Oh, what you want me to do? Just go stand in bed and cry? The fuck? I done cried enough. Every tear I done... Listen, let me say something. Every tear that I done cried for this has been cried already. I don't have, a, I don't have another tear. The only thing you're going to get me doing is holding my head up and chest out and taking it like the man I am. That's all you're going to have left. So if that's not enough for you, bitch, I suggest you press that because you're following me. <laughs> that's what I suggest you to fuck do. Big Cam 07, no. I'm not offensive with the comments. I'm offensive with the something about why what we get signed it ain't about but the gossip part i don't give a fuck about it big cam come to the light or you get blocked too nasty bitch come on come tell me to my face i'm not saying something about no motherfucking what the fuck you gossiping about if i'm talking about something about these motherfucking books they ain't got nothing motherfucking do for you what the fuck wrong with you and me talking about somebody yeah i did that and so should i be talked about yep i should you motherfucking well right i should be talked about however in context i ain't never Show me where I tried to stop a bitch bag. Or show me when I wish somebody was going to jail. Show me that one. Show me when I was talking about somebody's kids or something. This was been doing to me. Just so you know. And not that I give a fuck because a bitch could suck out my asshole. I wouldn't give a fuck. But at the end of the day, but at the end of the day, oh, you ain't gonna come up to the line? Chase, come on, I'm sorry. Oh, she don't want to come up. She left. Okay, that's what the fuck I thought, nasty bitch. That's what I thought. The, the hard copy will be available as well. It's coming. She asked me, why the fuck I'm mad? Bitch, I'm not mad. I'm mad. I ain't mad. I'm just saying what the fuck is on my mind. I've been drinking, bitch. <laughs> 
If, if, should I be talking about you, motherfucking Will Wright? I should be talking about with a context. No, come on, Chase. I'm sorry. And don't worry about that. We got to talk about these Van Gogh stuff because I'm in the side by. We'll see. <laughs> come on. Press the request. <laughs> Uh uh, no. I had to just cuss the bitch out real quick because they got me fucked up. Excuse my, I could cuss over here. I couldn't cuss in front of my head across. You know, I was trying to be on my best behavior, even though I'm a little drunk. And I should have been drunk in an interview. Let me be drunk in this little interview. It's showing my ass what I should have been doing it. <laughs> What's going on, brother? How you doing? What's going on? Good to see you. My fault early. I was hustling back to my hotel, man. This is my daughter's first family reunion. She had her uh, first. Family picnic, she was a little overexcited. Y'all thought that was a bunch of kids. That's just my one loud ass daughter, y'all. She a little feral guy. How old is she? Three. Okay. She cool as a button, but man, let me tell you, my daughter, dog, she's gonna be the first female commandant of the Marine Corps, and she ain't even gonna have to enlist. She run shit, man. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Okay, that's what's up. Okay, shout out to her. We love, we love the kids over here. So I'm shaking, but let's. Everybody should know that, but you are. I am. Yes, sir. Am so I'm Chase Bone. You, you so are, who, who, yes, I'm pronouncing it right? Yeah, Chase Bone. You got it exactly right. I appreciate you. Everybody messed it up, man. But you got it right first, though. Because I'm like that. But okay, so, um, so you are a published author. Mm -hmm. You are kind of like a motivational speaker as well. I do a little bit of everything, man. Like, um, honestly, I just like to talk. So anytime I get an opportunity to share, uplift, and elevate, and edify, especially my people, that's what I'm going to do. Like, you know what I'm saying? I come from a hood where we ain't never have a lot of edification, and our elders didn't speak life. They might put a pack in our hand, but they ain't speak life into us. So as I now am coming to that age where I'm getting to be the OG, I try to speak life into the young brothers and everybody that's around me. You know what I mean? That's part of why I write what I write and do what I do. What? You said you from the hood. What hood are you from? Where I'm from Bridgeport, Connecticut. Right? Uh, they used to call it Beirut when I was little. You know what I'm saying? So it was wild because it was wild. And it's wild now, but it ain't nothing like it was back in the day. Okay. Definitely. Um, you perpetuate, purport to be uh, a medieval martial artist yes sir what yes. is that explain that to me what that is. so pretty much um you know everybody got a fighting system cultural fighting system so we're familiar with stuff like karate kung fu and uh kenpo stuff like that but uh the armed combat systems in europe and africa we call those historical martial arts and um when i was in high school i tried to join the fencing team right because I was just trying to be a better defensive lineman. I figured fencing be good for my footwork and all of that. So I started trying to fence. And the fencing coach was like, wait, wait, wait. He pulled me to the side one day. He's like, Chase, you're going to win every fight and lose every fencing match, bro. Because fencing ain't fighting. It's a sport. You're not supposed to be doing this like you fight. And so he introduced me to uh, Fiore de Libere and Johannes Lichtenhauer and some of these really, really old, really, really dead white men that wrote these treatises on how to fight with stuff like swords and spears and daggers and axes. And so he introduced me kind of to that world as a way to kind of uh, – like, off-season workout stuff, you know what I'm saying? Because Coach knew I ain't like to run, so he got me on the swordsman stuff, figuring I'd be doing all the same stuff that I'd be doing, trying to run and do all of that, getting that same kind of workout. And it did. I can't front. It made me a better football player. And um, that just kind of turned into a lifelong love of the sport. And so every day, um, I pretty much I practice with my weapons. Sometimes I even put the armor on. It's a dope workout. Um, lately, I've been getting into more of the historical African martial arts. And what a lot of people don't know is that these were the fighting systems that our ancestors fought the rebellions with. So whether you're talking about um, Escrima con Machete, right, from Colombia and places in Latin America, or you're talking about um, pretty much the Akan fighting styles, which are the forefather of all of the machete fighting styles in North America. Like, these are the things that people like Nat Turner and Charles Deslandes and uh, Toussaint Leoverture and these brothers that fought the slave rebellions in the Americas used to defend our people and to win their rebellions in some cases, especially when we talk about Haiti. Okay. That's what's up. Interesting, interesting, interesting 
aspect when it comes to uh, that aspect of our culture. Well, that's uh, definitely something I just learned, man. I didn't know that the historical African martial arts were integral to like our efforts for liberation in this country. Like, and a lot of them come from like, you know, you hear about the Zulu stick fighting and people hear about Dombe Dombe in Senegal, right? But these are the things that our ancestors brought across the water with them. Like capoeira is a historical African martial art that more people are more familiar with. And so like, I really, when I started researching the right the Vanguard series, that's when I started finding out about historical African martial arts and that really put me on the wave and I started adding that into what I do with the historical European stuff I had learned in high school. Which kind of answers my next question which was how much of this makes it into your books? So tell us about your writing then and, and maybe kind of uh, we can understand this. So you became, whoop, became an author. I, I, I haven't read any of your books yet but I, I know I'm going to get a chance to do so very very soon but tell us about your books. Okay, so um, I'm the author of the Vanguard, right? The first book I ever wrote was called The Road of Resistance. And um, it takes place in my home city. And it's about basically a group of blurs who use historical martial arts to defend their community after medieval weapons become the only weapons. And so I kind of started writing this because I remember seeing Black Panther being so excited. Right, and then watching Ryan Coogler and them get on TV and say, yo, this movie wasn't for African Americans. This is a movie about Africans in Africa. We didn't do this for you. And I was like, well, fuck you all then. Right? And so I was like, yo, you know what? I'm going to tell my own story that is for Africans in America, written about African American people and our culture and our vernacular. And that's exactly what I wrote when I started. I sat down and started to write the Vanguard series. Um, I choreograph every fight scene in all the books I write. So anything that has like some historical type of action, I literally put my armor on and choreographed in fight scenes, whether I had me a practicing dummy or not. And uh, so I can make it real and make it live because I'm one of the people where I read a book and if your fight scenes don't jive, you got stories doing stuff, stories don't do because I really do this. You know what I'm saying? Like it's a huge turn off for me. And um, so I just try to make it as realistic and as you know gritty as possible. Damn. Interesting. Okay. And so how, we, you are a signed author to uh, Wahida Clark Publisher. Mm-hmm. Well, um, Tell us how that works for you, how, how being kind of connected with the queen herself works for you, especially when your books, your books are more of a, a kind of like an urban slash sci-fi slash mm. that's not, that's, that a lot of us may be, it may be foreign to some of us. Yeah, well, pretty much, um, I had published the Road of Resistance Indie, right, my first go around. Right. And um, I almost died, Shaky. Like, and my wife was really. I was gonna. I was gonna shelf the project completely. A uh, 2019, uh, some drunk person hit my car. My car hit a pole, split in three pieces, caught on fire. Um, the only thing that kept me from flying 30 feet out of my car was my seatbelt. But I broke the windshield with my face. But it worked out though, because I ain't too ugly. So you know, ain't bad for going through a car windshield. And uh, you know, I, I had to retire from my job. Um, like my life is real different. You know what I mean? Like, I couldn't do what I was used to doing. Thank you so much. And yeah, the, the Lord definitely had me. Like, my ancestors and the Lord had their hands on me because people thought I was dead. Like, the only reason why the man pulled me out my car was because he told his girlfriend that was with his like, dad, leave him be. He's like, would you want somebody to leave your relative to burn up so they couldn't have an open casket? And he pulled me out of my car and found out I was alive. And I thank God for the brother every day. He didn't even leave his name because he was afraid to get sued. But really, I wish I could find that brother and thank him on behalf of me and my kids because it's like I wouldn't be here, bro, if not for you. Right. And so, um, definitely glad. I and I was, you know, doing my Instagram hustle, right? Trying to uh, get on what I was doing. And when it comes down to it, uh, one of Wahida's staff found me because Ray went to fantasy, right, with Emperors and Assassins, which is a really dope book, and if y'all haven't checked it out, you should. Um, and so they asked me to beta read it before they published, so I did. And so we got the vibe, and I got to meet Wahida, and we were talking about the state of science fiction and fantasy and how really some of the first books published by black people in America with science fiction and fantasy. There's a brother called Martin Delaney who wrote this book called Blake or the Huts of America, which was about a formerly enslaved person, his lover getting sold to a different plantation. And so he travels from his plantation all the way into the uh, 
you know, antebellum Caribbean looking for his woman, right? And he records the experiences of different slaves in different places. And so this is the first, some of the first writing of black people in America, right? You know what I'm saying? Just a couple, maybe a hundred years after Phyllis Wheatley, right? And her fame. And so science fiction and fantasy has kind of been integral to our history as a people in this place, right? Because a lot of people don't know um, W.E.B. Du Bois wrote a sci-fi book. Uh, yeah, nah, it's called The Comet. And it's about uh, this post-apocalyptic event. This comet hits New York City and this uh, lower-class black man and this rich white women are forced to uh, survive together, right? And it's his commentary. He gets to say some things about race and social interaction. And so, like, this is why science fiction and fantasy is so important to us as a people. And so me and Wahida got to talking, and together we came up with uh, SFF for the culture, right, which is science fiction fantasy for the culture, because it's the stuff that we love, right, the stuff that, that we watch on TV, our science fiction, our fantasy, that drives our imaginations and changes how we touch the world. Right, like think about how much stuff that was just really sci-fi when we was little kids, Shaky. You ever imagine we'd be doing this right now when we was in second grade? No. Nah, we didn't even, and if the technology did exist, we didn't think we'd be able to afford it. Yeah, right no. before, this was something that we seen on, what, the, the, the Apple Watch wasn't nothing but the Power Rangers Morpher, right? Because remember, they was talking to Zordon, like, right? Yeah. So it's stuff <laughs> like that that changes, like, you know, this is what inspires people and changes our world. Listen, if the if the Apple Watch is starting to let us teleport like the Power Rangers Watch is starting to let us teleport, then I'm going to know something. I'm going to I'm, I'm gonna definitely know something. But, oh, yeah, now nah, I'm about to do a three with something to put on and get <laughs> all your pizza and stuff to watch this stuff. Uh, 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 so, okay, so the Vanguard series became like a breakout series for you. Yeah, uh, no, nah, definitely did. Okay, tell us about, tell us a bit about, so the, in, how did it uh, differ from your first novel? Is it in the same universe? Uh, is it subsequent or, or kind of like what happens with that? Okay, so the Vanguard is the name of the creative universe that started with the Road of Resistance, right? And so really, events kick off after uh, this group of scientists hijacked this DARPA project they were working on. Now, they were supposed to be protecting the country from terrorists, and instead what they do is they set it up so that it wipes out all weapons technology post in the 6th century. So there's no guns, no bombs, no fighter jets, nothing like that, right? Okay. And so... Because we are plunged into this situation, you know, our country ain't built for us leveling the playing field. Because without no guns, who got the power? Right? And so they decide to regulate, and that's when our main character, Cassette, gathers his homies, and they try to fight off these corrupt cops and the hate groups that thought they was going to stroll into this black community and turn it into their playground. And then it goes from protecting their community to building kind of like this hood-ass Camelot that we call the Vanguard. And so... um Originally, when I came on with Wahida, the first book was real long, so we split it in two. So that gave us the Road of Resistance Part 1 and Part 2. And then um, after my accident, like, my wife is like, yo, bro, you can't keep sitting here. You can't give up, right? You can't just stop writing. Like, honestly, it'll be good for you because I sustained a traumatic brain injury. I lost about 30% of my function. I had to learn how to read again. Like, there was a lot. And so, um, yeah, I spent 17 weeks in therapy, bro. Like, 17 weeks, four times a week for 17 weeks straight just to be able to walk and, like, you know, do normal stuff. And so when um, I sat down, I started writing the word we make as the immediately preceding the events that the end of Road of Resistance. And honestly, I feel like it's some of my best work. And, um, and then I started working on the book that I got coming out on November 7th which is uh, A Dread and Glorious Nation, which contains those first three books, plus like another book of brand new content that nobody's ever seen before. And it kind of explains some of the stuff that's going on. Um, I introduced some more fantasy elements to it. And what I have a lot of fun with in the Vanguard books is mixing, walking that line between fantasy and science fiction, right? And so what you'll discover in uh, A Dread and Glorious Kingdom is how, you know, you get dragons and stuff like that in fantasy books, and you just, you know, you just take it for granted that it's there because this is their world. So in the Vanguard, because it's based so much off of our world, I use real-world technology like CRISPR and uh, apply it to this fantasy context so we get stuff like, you know, the dragons and stuff that we usually get in the fantasy world. But I love it because it's so hooked. 
Like, even though it's a sci-fi and a fantasy book, it low-key reads like street lit because our characters are from the hood, and, like, this is who they embody. And real talk, like, they're blurs, and not all blurs just chilling in the house all day. Some of us run the street and watch anime in secret where can't nobody right. on the block find out about it, right? And so... We gotta... I think more black people... Like, right now, especially when it comes to, like, the biggest... Right now, the biggest movie in the world is Thor Love Thunder. Like, $200 million at the box office. I had to go see it myself. I'm like, what the fuck? It's suckering it. But at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not a lot of us in that genre, even though not that genre is millions and billions and billions of dollars. That's literally, That's like, in the same type of world. Um, me coming from... My nerdness can, can definitely say that I'm very excited to... Uh, I'm, I'm to, to get where can we get your books? I'm excited to get them. Uh -huh. Let us know right now where we can get your books. Make sure y'all follow him too. Press the follow yeah. button. Give a person a follow. It's free to follow. I don't know why people want to follow people. Yeah, 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 definitely. Please follow me. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, the link in my bio, chasebowlandauthor.com. You can get my books. Like, I ask everybody that's trying to support us and what we do at Bahita Clark Business Publishing and SFF for the culture to uh, purchase our products through Amazon. I know a lot of people don't like Amazon, but right now, that's the platform. That's like the mall. So we want to be popping in the mall. We want our titles ranking up number one in Amazon categories because this is how we show the world that authors of color and independent publishing houses can compete with the top five. Right. Like, Amazon is definitely like every a lot of people ask this question. This is not just for us. If you want to support an indie author, you want to support a black author, period. Right? Amazon is the largest platform, right? And they report their numbers first and fastest out of everybody in the industry. Right? And so if you want to support an author, you really want to make sure they do good. And I know a lot of us boycott Amazon, right? But the way you shine that light on them, the way you big them up is you go to Amazon, right? You go to that playing field and you rank them up, you level them up, right? And that's how you do it. So if you guys check me out on Amazon, I definitely appreciate it. Uh, you could get the first three books of the Vanguard series. Uh, and you could also pre-order A Dread and Glorious Kingdom right now. Right now, pre-order is four ninety nine. As we get closer to the release date, we're we kind of bumping that up. But I wanted to show love to the fans and the people that have been rocking with me since I published Andy. Like, hey, come out, get this title. And anybody that gets it early gets it at a little bit of a discount. Is it difficult, do you think, to get people interested in urban sci-fi, which is basically your, I, I don't know, you're the only urban sci-fi author I ever thought about. I never even thought about, uh, I don't know how to even, so you're going to be the first one I, I get a chance to read, so it's going to be a lot for other people. Do you find it different breaking into that market? Because you're definitely basically crafting a new market. Well, you know what? This is what I'll say, right? It's one of those things where because my book blends genres, right, a lot of people uh, I tell you flat out, a lot of people that like fantasy books don't like a lot of politics and they sci-fi, even though politics are 90% of sci-fi and fantasy books. Like, and that's just what it is, right? But I've noticed that anybody that picks it up, like I've got one bad review since the book's been out and only one three-star review, right? And so it's one of those things where I don't necessarily think it's been hard to get people to check it out because I feel like, especially us, it's like people of color, we've been begging for this. Like, we've been wanting the Game of Thrones with black faces. We've been wanting something like a, a, a The Last Kingdom with black faces. Like, we had one season of Lovecraft, uh, Lovecraft Country, right? And we were so excited, and that galvanized it. We had one Black Panther movie. We were so excited and so galvanized, right? And so what I did with the Vanguard is I give you these vibes, right? And I give you these vibes in a way where, you know, they say Lovecraft Country, they couldn't make no more seasons because it was only one book. Nah, y'all, listen, I got the first three books in the series, I got Dread and Glorious Kingdom, and I got at least four more books in my head and outlined right now. So I guarantee you they ever make a show out my stuff, we got the content to rock for like 10 years. Right? Because to me, like, it's important, bro. Like, I think that I have so much fun doing this Right, and like stepping outside the box and building this new world based on the framework of our own and getting to shine a light on the different aspects of blackness and militant blackness right through the books. Like as y'all read through, 
Um, you see the groups like you know everybody black ain't the same. Let's like a uh, homie Sansa and Dave said, black ain't a single color. It got shades to it, right? Yeah. So even here in America, you know we got our hotel brothers and we got our brothers that 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 rock with the comedic science and we got our Islamic brothers and we got our brothers that are Moorish temple sciences. So I take a little bit of each of these different groups, right? And I I start with building civilizations, right? So um. Really, I had a great time, like basically getting to rewrite the map of America, right, is I think how things would play out. And then, you know, January 6th, everything that went down, my whole thing blew up. They're like, yo, you changed us. I was like, nah, man, I just know these crackers, bro. Like, <laughs> I just said what was plausible. I ain't even, you know, I wasn't making no predictions. But a lot of people said that. It's like, yo, dude, you really uh, just... Just, just you predicted this, and I was like, nah, man. Like, but that's how timely the Vanguard is, and that's the vibe I'm on. Like, if y'all are looking for something, so you miss King T'Challa, come check out the Vanguard, right? You miss Lovecraft Country, come check out the Vanguard. Like, I got your back. Like, that's the content we produce, and that's what we do. Um, at SFF for the culture is we we shine that unapologetic amplification on black voices in science fiction and fantasy because I know me as a fantasy reader right I was tired but right? I was burnt out because it's like number one historical fiction eventually you start running out of shit to talk about right within a certain given time period right everybody's writing about the battle of Agincourt everybody write about the Roman Empire ain't nothing different Right, you know what I'm saying? This the quality of the writer that separate the book, right? But we don't see ourselves reflected in that, right? Right, and so that's my whole mission. I got two projects on the burner right now. Um, one is set in space. It's kind of like Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon meets Star Wars. I'm calling it the Constellation of Fates. So I'm working on that. And then um, I got another title I'm working on called uh, Until Fire and Blood. And this is a historical fiction, and it's set in our Andalus, right? And we all know how the Moors came from Africa and conquered parts of Spain, France, and Italy, right? But then they turn around and tell us, like, yo, that wasn't y'all. That wasn't black people. That was North African people, and they made the same as you. But I done spent the last two years doing research, bro. And I tell you right here, right now, that that was us that's bullshit because a lot of the soldiers that won those wars were of uh, Fulani extraction or Wolof extraction. And those are our ancestors as African-Americans. Right? Those are our ancestors as African-Americans. And so it's exciting for me to write this and tell this story because our history don't start with slavery. Definitely not. Yeah, I heard start with slavery, and a lot of kids don't feel this. And I grew up in an Afro-Indigenous household, right? Like, my, you know, my family, black ass Indians. You from that area where you know about them swamp people and them black Indians, right? And so it's I'm like that's where my people come from. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? My grandmama was born in the Choctaw Nation, and yeah. so when it come down to, it, I always rock with that and I vibe with that. Now when I was young, like oh, I'm an Indian. Right, because you know we fought and we weren't enslaved and this, that, and the third. And then because I thought growing up, my history started with slavery, mm-hmm. and so I'm all about changing that and making that mindset different. Because I got kids in this world, man. I want my daughter knowing that about the Kandakes of ancient Meroe beating up the Roman Empire, and I want my son to know about Mansa Musa being the richest man in the world, and so that's really why we go so hard at SFF for the culture and try to tell these kinds of stories. Right. Definitely. Very interesting. Uh, man, make sure y'all get it. The first start with the Road of Resistance, you can, get all, you can get the whole series for 20 bucks. It's not even high. So make sure you support Black authors. Y'all make sure it's like really good. I definitely am order mine. Y'all make sure y'all order y'all. Y'all, check it out. Follow this brother, smart brother. He do a lot of work with us. Definitely part of the team. Y'all make sure y'all follow him. Uh, <laughs> definitely uh, chasebowlingauthor.com. More information on it. Y'all got to get into this. Get your kids into it, too. I think, too. Like, yeah, we need to get it. Like, it's a, definitely a movement here when it comes to this type of this genre, which is definitely being spearheaded right here. Uh, I thank you for your time. I pre- I'm sorry about some of the stuff that I have going on myself. Person, and I, you know, oh, no, nah, listen, man. Sometimes you got to regulate, Shaky, and I ain't going to hold you, bro. Listen, 
Like, I don't take no shit from no people. My mama ain't take no shit from nobody. I don't take no shit from nobody. And sometimes, usually I said, I let people. Listen, I got a quote in the Vanguard, right? The cassette said, he said, sometimes you got to let the world know who you are and who your ancestors have made. So, brother, I ain't never going to hold you. And I will hold Like, you part of the squad, bro. You know, you from the hood. You in the car with me. So, you know, you in the car with me. Right, I'm rocking with you, bro. And I just want to let you know, listen, I got my prayers going out to you. I already know you're going to swallow this bed whole. You're going to beat it up. But I'm still praying your strength. And there's another man of color that's been through it. I hate the fact that you got to walk through those doors. But guess what? You're going to walk back out of there a better man. Yep. Right, in the better place than you was when you went in. And now you got time to work, bro. I want to see a sci-fi book from NC Shaky. Because I love to see what you come up with. I think <laughs> <laughs> y'all make sure y'all pick up the road to resistance. If y'all don't, make sure y'all get to go to Hustler. If y'all don't, make sure y'all pre-order a quiz of All the links in my bio, wclarkpublishing.com. I don't know about the sci-fi book. Actually, you know what? I'm going to buy this. I know a motherfucking few people that's got to be motherfucking monsters and space aliens. So I might write a man's little sci-fi book. I might yeah, write one, and we're going to call it The Crayon Clueless. And it's going to be a book about these people that if makeup get on it, let me stop. But uh, I know a few people that could have been a, a that got to be space aliens if you ask me. Uh, so definitely, uh, definitely good idea, brother. We might make that happen. I might. Yeah, we might make that happen. Co can we co author that? I'm down. Listen, listen, if why you didn't tell you any of these authors on this squad, man, anybody could reach out to me for help. I'll do anything to see y'all win. Is that's what we about over here at Team WCP. We about winning and winning together. So any help you need, brother, we could co author it. Let's do it. We can say brainstorm something out and we get it done, bro. Definitely. I appreciate your time, brother. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, we definitely oh, next week we're gonna have another Wahida Clark publishing author with us. Uh make sure y'all check out Chase. Definitely, man. Y'all check him out. He's a good brother, smart brother, very smart brother. I talked to him too, uh, offline. Very smart brother. I can't Thank wait to read his books. Y'all shouldn't either. Thank y'all so much. Thanks. All right, bro. Peace, power.